YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or you can send it directly on Patreon if you are a Team Keep It Clean patron. I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. I appreciate y'all. This episode also features our guy, The Flock Block. Make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel and follow him on Twitter as well. I love y'all. Let's get back into it. This question came from my boy Joshua B. Say, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the family are doing good. I'm watching the stream right now in the game. Uh, so this was during the first preseason game while he sent this. He oh. says, so I was thinking, what if people are counting out the wrong wide receiver? And I think we will keep Miles and James, but... Tyler Wallace is the odd man out. We haven't heard much about him in training camp. Even though Miles has had all these drops and he got hurt, I still think he can make the 53. Uh, mainly, I think so because his height and his blocking. And Wallace hasn't proven anything. What do you think? Much love and love the Viz. Appreciate it, Josh. Um, with Tyler Wallace, as of today, this recording is being done on August 19th. Um, so after the first preseason game, before the second preseason game, and while Ravens are at the joint practice with the uh, Panthers, um, Tylen Wallace, he's uh, been real quiet so far. And because we hadn't really heard much of anything about him leading up to that first preseason game, and then even in the first preseason game, um, he didn't really get to really do anything. He did draw a pass interference call in the end zone. Um, he also had a really nice catch on the sideline, but he couldn't get both feet down. So it was an incompletion. Right. Um, and then he also had the muffed punt. So hasn't gotten off to the best start, but I can't not off the one preseason game. I, I can't count him out uh, yet because we still got two more games to go. Uh, and I think over these next couple of games, his uh, his opportunity and his playtime, it'll ramp up a little bit. Um, so with, with Tylen Wallace, the jury's still out, um, but I, I just I think it's really, just really too early to cast him off as uh, as not making a team right now. So well, how how you feel about Tylen Wallace moving forward? Yeah, as far as Tylen Wallace, I do have to agree. Um, I, if we look at you know the wide receiver group with Wallace, Prochet, and Miles Boykin, uh, I think Tylen Wallace. You know, we we just have to see him do more. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just going to need a, a bigger sample size. I need to see right. what he can do with the time that's been given to him. And, you know, he's a rookie, um, you know, drafted towards the latter portion of the draft. So, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve. And I mm -hmm. do think that, you know, that definitely plays a factor into things, that maybe he just has to take the time to learn things. Same thing with James Prochet last year. You can tell there was a bit of a learning curve, learning curve for him coming out of SMU. And they both had real, real good tape coming out of college. So, mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think Tom Wallace will just have to see him adjust and get used to things. Now, I will say I am rooting, and I really, really love what James Prochet has been doing, coming out early in the jug machine, going the extra mile every single day in practice. And that is the type of stuff that you see you just want to root for. Now, right. the odd man out for me, unfortunately, probably would be Miles Boykin. Um, you know, I don't know if he's you know going to get cut, you know, you know, before the regular season starts, but I don't think he – you know, is the type of person that's going to have a long-term future with the Ravens. Um, I just feel like, um, you know, a lot of people and, you know, probably just haven't been impressed with, you know, what he's been able to do since he's been a receiver on the team. Um, you know, he's had some good moments here and there, but just overall, as far as production, just hasn't been what we expected to be. Um, this is a guy that really had a lot of good intangibles coming out of Notre Dame and, you know, athletic for his size, but just hasn't really gelled well. Great blocker on the outside, but as a pass catcher and as a threat, just isn't what we really, you know, hoped him to be. So uh, I don't know. I don't think that, you know Miles Borkin is the guy that, you know, is 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 going to be you know, seeing on the Ravens roster for quite some time, in my opinion. Next question came from my guy Mark H. He said, "Engraving after the offense took a step back in 2020, a lot of fans, including myself, have been wondering what the Ravens will do in 2021 to get back on top of the league." I believe the key to the Ravens' offensive scheme in 2021 is a concept that Wink Martindale has used to build a dominant defense. Get players with diverse skill sets and use them in unpredictable ways. Uh, we might be the only team that will drop Calais Campbell into coverage while blitzing Marlon Humphrey, but it makes it impossible for the offense to be right. I believe that the Ravens' offense in 2021 is set to win with a similar idea. 
In 2019, Greg Roman broke the league by using the best runner at the QB position the league has ever seen so that an unblocked defensive end would always be wrong. In 2020, the league started to adjust. In 2021, the Ravens must not only force the defense to always be wrong in the run game, but also between defending the run and the pass. In 2021, I want to see Duvernay taking handoffs from motion in five wide sets. I want to see us passing with two tight ends and a fullback on the field. I want to see our running backs catching passes and our wide receivers run blocking. I want to see play action passes coming from a zone read disguise. This is how we leverage our greatest superpower as an offense. Lamar Jackson's deadly combo of passing and running. If you put your coverage guys on the field, we crush you in the run game. And if you put your run stoppers on the field, we air it out. This offense needs to be built on optionality and disguise. Not only do I hope this will happen, but I also am optimistic that it will based on the steps the Ravens have taken. Adding the fullback screen game into the scheme late last year to beat the Titans. Bringing in T. Martin to get the receivers in tip-top shape and Keith Williams to help Greg Roman scheme the pass. Doubling down on receiver in the draft. I believe the Ravens are taking the steps to move from a run-first team to a team capable of running or passing on any down from any formation. If they can execute this well, I believe the Ravens can become more undefendable than 2019 and the most dangerous team in the league. There are growing pains to zigging while the rest of the league zags, but there's also potential for greatness. Keep up the good work and really appreciate the positive community you built around the Ravens here on YouTube. Oof, this was a good one. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah, he, and it's called the key to offensive dominance. That's what he called I this. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't even know where to start, where to end, where to do this he summed everything up <laughs> um, really. like this yeah this is this is great man um now i know one thing that you mentioned is that in 2020 the league started to adjust mm -hmm. um there that's the only part of this where i would have a little bit of pushback i don't even think it was that the league really started to adjust i think it was that the ravens just they couldn't really implement because 2019, um, going from 2018 to 2019, 2018, Marty Morningweg is the offensive coordinator. He gets he gets fired. He gets creatively fired. Um, and then they're like, all right, 2019, Greg Roman is going to be our offensive coordinator. So, okay, and Lamar Jackson is obviously going to be the starter. They traded Joe Flacco to the Broncos. It's Lamar's time. 2019 offseason. They implemented this, like, they changed the system, like, in the middle of the year in 2018 when Lamar took over. But in 2019, in that offseason, they got an opportunity to really implement this whole new system and everything that they were going to be doing moving forward. Uh, so then they get through 2019. The offense kills it. And even though in the playoffs they got killed. In the regular season, the offense killed it. They did their thing. So then you go from 2019 to 2020 to the 2020 offseason. But boom, you don't have an off season, so you 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 have uh, you can't really build on what you did the previous year uh, if you don't have a chance to implement new things. If you don't have a chance to meet with the guys, if you don't have a training camp, if you don't have a regular off season, so I think that's really what hindered the Ravens' offense the most um, was not having that off season. So not being able to really add new ideas in the off season. I'm sure they did some stuff during the regular season and as they went on, but having no off season made it a lot tougher. So this is one of the reasons why, like you mentioned, and I agree, I'm very optimistic about what this offense can do this year is because they will have had a full regular, well, as much as stuff is regular right now, but they will have had a full regular offseason. So they'll have a chance to implement new ideas, new schemes, new passing plays, new running plays, new concepts, new all of that stuff, especially with uh, T. Martin and Keith Williams, too. Well, yeah, uh, he made a lot of really good points. You know, it was, it was a lengthy question, but, it, you know, he emphasized on a lot of really good things. Uh, I think, you know, what it really boils down to is just opening up the playbook. And, you know, coaches want to open up the playbook when they understand that the players have the fundamentals, you know, broken down and they're able to understand certain concepts and work on certain things in practice to the point where it can be applied and used well. And that's where T. Martin and Keith Williams comes into play. It just fine shooting these pass catchers and, and 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 receivers and stuff like that. And also working closely with Lamar Jackson to make sure that he has this continuity with these players to make sure that they can start doing different things. Because ultimately, if we want to get to where we want to go, 
we've got to be able to open up the playbook and do other things in the event that teams like Pittsburgh, Kansas City, Buffalo, Cleveland mm-hmm. are up on us and we need to pass our way to pass our way to get back into the game. Not completely pass and change our identity, but be able to, you know, emphasize the run, but also switch things up, like you said, with those zone reads and those jet sweeps and um five wides. Um, there are a lot of different things that we can do as far as play action, uh, and RPOs as well. So, you know, there's no limit. The sky's a limit as far as what we can do and in all different formations we can line up in uh, just because of what Lamar Jackson brings as a talent and all the other people out front of us. Now, one of the things that I think hurt us uh, leaving 2019, transitioning into 2020, like you said, the pandemic, the pandemic kind of hindered the ability for us to kind of get new guys in and learn, you know, uh, what the offense brings. Also, we have to understand that two most explosive offenses in the NFL in 2019 were the Ravens and Chiefs. So um, the easiest defense or the easiest offense to kind of slow down was the Ravens because, you know, if you kind of put, you know, guys in the box and you kind of try to force Lamar Jackson to throw, you know, defensive coordinators thought, okay, you know, what happens if we try to, you know, uh, force him to throw uh, outside? You know, they uh, try to put these little triangle zones around Mark Andrews and try to force the ball on the other, other receivers other than Hollywood Brown. What happens if we do those? What happens if we focus on those two guys? So, um, you know, uh, Patrick Mahomes over in Kansas City, he has an embarrassment of riches. So, you know, defense coordinators are just scratching their head and they don't know what to do about that. But uh, with, with, with the Ravens, you know, the, the passing concepts, the route concepts, uh, the personnel wasn't really – the best outside of Hollywood and outside of Mark Andrews. So uh, for some of the best defensive coordinators in the league, they were trying to say, hey, you know what, Lamar Jackson, he's not, you know, he's a terrific passer, but the personnel, you know, you know, uh, or they got to prove, they got to uh, show us more. And and when they show us more, we'll respect it. But until now, we're going to key in on these guys and make life difficult for them. So I just think adjusting has to be the emphasis for Greg Roman this year, opening up the playbook now that they have more personnel like Watkins and like Rashad Bateman, um, and also hopefully like James Prochet. Um, and I think the last point that we have to look at is, um, I feel like we didn't value certain positions. We, we felt like certain positions couldn't be replaced or emphasized going into the season. For example, when Marshall Yonder retired, we didn't really do anything to kind of uh, get another solid right guard in there. Mm-hmm. Um, that can be, you know, of service. Uh, we we didn't get another left guard in there that um, that c- that can be really solid until we found Bradley Bozeman. And at center, uh, we knew Matt Skur had a very good year the year prior, but is he really a long term option? Is he really a solid center to go with uh, if you're trying to, you know, block uh, for Lamar Jackson? Also, you know, uh, pass catching tight end. We had we ran a lot of three tight end sets in 2019. Um, who was the other pass catching tight end outside of uh, Mark Andrews? We didn't have one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick Boyle is a primary, primarily, you know, a pass blocker and run blocker. Him and Gronk were the best pass blocking and run blocking tight ends in the league. But as a pass catcher, you know, he's not really the type of guy that you look for, even on your second option. So I think we needed another pass catching tight end. Um, and also, I think, you know, trying to give too many touches to all three of those running backs. I think we just needed yeah, one strong one to punch like a lot of teams do. The Rams did it last year, Tampa Bay, we saw them do it. Just go to simple ones, you punch. Gus said it was in J.K. Dobbins. You know? and, and I think, you know, just, just keeping things simple, not trying to move on from so many you know, different positions that are valuable. Um, you know, interior right, interior offensive line, pass catching tight ends, pass rush, all these things are very important as far as you know, the strength of the team and making sure that this team gels. All right, and the last question on this episode, a question from subscribers came from my guy, Denor G. Uh, he said, morning in Graven. I stayed up all night and just figured to check out the Ravens clip for a second to catch a glimpse of things. I drive all day long, so I hear our podcast on 105.7 The Fan. Some of the crew members go to the practices and they watch and interviews, uh, and I've been hearing a lot of praise for James Prochet, uh, making big plays down the field, scoring touchdowns, going crazy. They also mentioned back when he was practicing that it looked like Boykin was the odd man out because Prochet had just been balling in camp. I'm happy for Prochet, no doubt, but do you think that this will translate uh, to his connection with Lamar Jackson? Let's remember, he has had great chemistries with the twos and third string players uh, who are also uh, working with Tyler Huntley and now um, Kenji Bahar. 
Uh, and they say that Huntley has the prettiest deep ball out of all the QBs. And he is the best fit to run this offense if Lamar has to come out for any reason. Uh, we were just talking about that earlier. Yeah. Um, but but anyway, do you think that Prochet will thrive with Lamar just like how he's been doing uh, with the backup quarterbacks? And also, who is the X-Factor wide receiver this year? Who do you think are, will be our 2021-22 20, wide receiver group? Bateman, Watkins, Hollywood, and who else? Um, and do we still have that big physical nickel corner from Minnesota that we signed from the end of last year who wore number 27? If so, wow. Who wore 27 last year? It wasn't Khalil Dorsey. 27? Last year, I think it wasn't JK. Oh, man, I'm tripping. Yeah, that's JK. <laughs> Does he look like Lil Ray Rice? <laughs> oh, oh, maybe maybe he meant the guy who wore number 27 in Minnesota. But... I can't think of who he's talking yeah, about. I can't remember what. Yeah. Yeah. But either way, with Proche, um, yeah, if I, I think Proche could definitely thrive with Lamar if uh, as long as they just build up that chemistry. That's that's all they got to do. I think it's pretty simple. Um, and with uh, Bateman being out, Watkins, uh, recently he's he had been out for I think I know he missed practice today. I believe in yesterday. No, yesterday he was in, but he missed practice today. But with Hollywood still being out too. Uh, that means that Prochet's reps, they've been going up. Uh, so he'll have more opportunity to uh, catch passes from Lamar and sort of just build up that chemistry and build up that reliability and build up that trust. Uh, and as far as the X Factor wide receiver this year, I would say, uh, I'd say Sammy Watkins. Mm. I'd say Sammy Watkins. Um, because with, with Hollywood, I feel like we, we know what we can get. And we know the potential that we can get from him, too. But I would say Sammy Watkins because uh, we don't know what we're going to get yet. We know he can play. We know he can ball. But do we know if he's going to be healthy? Well, we don't know, obviously. But hopefully, right. I think his health, just everything depends on his health. Um, because he is primed to be uh, one of Ravens' top targets. Uh, he is familiar with Greg Roman's system. He's the veteran wide receiver out of the bunch. Um, and he's he's been in every type of game, played in every type of situation, won a Super Bowl, lost a Super Bowl, and everything that comes in between. But um, I, I think the X factor would definitely be uh, Sammy Watkins for sure. What about you? Yeah, for me, uh, as far as James Prochet, I definitely believe he can develop a stronger relationship with Lamar Jackson just based on everything we've been seeing from him. Just going the extra mile to do everything, make the plays, make the catches, uh, you know, showing up to practice early, putting in the work. And I also anticipate that he's probably, you know, spending staying extra longer in film study or in the weight room. He's he's doing everything he can to prove his worth. And mm -hmm. if it means building a relationship with Lamar Jackson, who is QB one, who's me throwing you the ball this season, you know, I do believe that's what's gonna end up happening. And it the play will show on the field, you know, because obviously, you know, I think there's no doubt in our mind he's gonna make a team just based on what he's been doing. So um, if that's going to happen and he's going to make him make his way onto the field, I think that he's going to be, be very, very valuable towards um, the offense, just based off the relationship he's going to build with Lamar Jackson. And it'll be interesting to hear what Lamar has to say about Prochet and his, his work I think, and what he's been doing and what the cameras aren't showing us. So um, I really think that's cool. As far as the X factor, I still think it's going to be Hollywood Brown. I think so because now – there's a little bit of a low taken off of Marquise Brown now, right? He's not right. – uh, he, obviously, I still think he's he's one of the best receivers on the team, but now you have Rashad Bateman, uh, who's that big physical uh, wide receiver that has a wide catch radius that can make plays for Lamar Jackson on the outside. Then you have Stanley Watkins, who's a more seasoned, more veteran, uh, experienced wide receiver that is obviously looking good in training camp. And Lamar Jackson said, hey – Sammy Watkins is making my life easier. Yeah. So uh, obviously we hope he can stay healthy. Uh, if he can, then you know he can be another receiver on the outside that can you know produce. And also we still have Mark Andrews and Nick Boyle inside just in case Lamar still wants to work the middle of the field in case the defenses are giving him that. So that will definitely take off pressure from Highwood Brown. And you can see him maybe in the slot. You can see him sometimes on the outside and mm -hmm. even in those RPOs and those screens and stuff like that. And he can be in a role where his his athleticism and his speed is properly utilized. So I think uh, you know with, with all that and all the personnel changes, you know it will help Marquise Brown. It will help his improvement, and um, you know, he'll he'll be in a position where he can 
be more productive this season. So I think the X Factor will definitely be uh, with Brown. Shout out to Graven.